top. Hey, even Santa in Nebraska as the Huskers try to get back on top. Hey, even Santa Claus is making an early stop in Lincoln for this one. Kills per game, and she will be a tough defensive assignment for Nebraska. Now, Terry Zemitis brings a lot of experience to the floor for the Lady Lions. However, Russ Rose is going to be starting three freshmen in this final. Well, they started out the season with four seniors that they thought would be the bulk of their team, but the freshmen have played their way into the lineup, and they are going to play well tonight. One of the ones to look for, Lauren Kajiamani. She is outstanding. She's averaging 3.34 kills per game, but she is fabulous at the net. Watch for her block as well with 1.62 blocks per game. Nebraska may be playing its best volleyball of the season right now, and they're playing it with one of the best players in the country. Well, they said earlier this year that it might be a rebuilding year, but don't tell that to the team. They're 29-3, and three. and Lisa Reitzman, one of the reasons. She's averaging an amazing five kills per game. She was an All-American last year, and her performance has gone up a notch this year. Now, she's a returning All-American from Nebraska's national championship team. The Huskers lost three All-Americans from last year's squad, but Santa Claus came early to Nebraska. They gave them a special gift. Oh, Megan Corver is so great for Nebraska. She is a transfer from George Washington University. She was recruited as a walk-on by Nebraska, but went for that scholarship. She was the Atlantic 10 Newcomer of the Year last year and then decided to come back home to Nebraska, and she has been tremendous. She's great in the middle, and she also has a great offensive arm swing. Nebraska has lost only twice in the last four years here at the Nebraska Coliseum, once to Stanford and once to Penn State in a regional final. Something to think about as we go to break. The first serve is coming your way next. With Holly Rowe, I'm Bill Dolman at the Coliseum in Lincoln, Nebraska. This place, Holly, is electric. They have been waiting for this match for a long, long time. Well, I got here about 5 o'clock, and people were already lined up outside the doors trying to get in. Special place to play. Nebraska is 29-3 and three on the year. They were ranked number four in the country in the final polls. Penn State, 31-2, and two, ranked number three. They have won 15 matches in a row. The starters are on the floor. It'll be Penn State with the opening serve. There's Russ Rose in his 18th year at Penn State and a winning percentage of better than 83%. His team has the opening serve. It's played by Krondak, and the Huskers have a tough time in transition setting up their opening offensive play. So it's Penn State now with a free chance to get on the board. Kachimani's tip is dug, and here's Krondak with Nebraska's first attack. Zomitis out of the back row. Good pass this time for Piano Nepo, and here's Lisa Weitzman with the kill. I expect to see a little bit longer rallies because Penn State is such a great defensive team. But anytime you can get Reitzman into the flow of the offense, look out. Jamie Krondak will serve for Nebraska as the Huskers try to get on the board first. On the slide, Cochran. Doug, but it's an overpass. Penn State with another chance. This side, Schoenfeld. And a net violation whistled on Nebraska on Stacey Mazur. And Penn State has the side out back. Well, I think it's been established early. But both teams are going to come out with the heat. They are going very powerful. There's a look at the starting lineups. We'll get to them in just a moment. Nepo going to her knees, setting Reitzma. She's blocked. Bremner going to Cochran. She's dug. And the second ball played by Reitzma. Zamitis with the kill. Penn State with a 1-0 lead. Here's a look at the starting lineups in the match. Penn State with Kamner, Cochran, Bremner, she's the center, and a good one as a freshman. Kachimani, Zamitis, and Schoenfeld. Reitz, McCrondack, Nepo, Cernich, and Mazur on the floor for the Huskers along with Renee Saunders. Reitzma on the back set. She's blocked. 
by Fiona Nepo's having to work awful hard for the Huskers to get the sets. And Nebraska's attack is long. Penn State with a 2 0 lead. Penn State is the best blocking team in the country, and you can see that right now. Zemitis very active in that middle, sealing the block. Cernich, she's long. Huskers want a touch. They don't get the call. Penn State leads it by three. And Terry Pettit will call his first time out. You can see that Nebraska is trying to hit high over the block, but as a result, they're hitting long. Here's a look at Kate Cernich coming in from the outside. Her attack goes long, and that gives Penn State its third point of the match. It's the Lady Lions with an early lead over Nebraska, three to nothing. Nebraska head coach Terry Pettit won a national championship last year. Now he's in his 20th season in Lincoln. Look at those numbers, 82.825 in his winning percentage. Well, he was the national coach of the year last year, and he's had an amazing record. You can see why today in practice, Bill, because he is such a patient teacher, and he breaks the game down better than just about anybody. And Russ Rose is a former Nebraska assistant coach. He was here in Lincoln back in the 70s. He went to Penn State, and he's built arguably the best program in the eastern part of the country. And his team leads Nebraska in Lincoln, 3 to nothing early on game one. Reitzma, she's dug. Here's Sean Bell. Her attack is wide. Nebraska has the side out, and the timeout pays off. Schoenfeld is one of those freshmen we're talking about for Penn State. She did not start at the beginning of the season. She's just worked her way into the lineup in the last seven matches. Here's Maria head back into the lineup for Nebraska. She's a defensive specialist out of Solentuna, Sweden, and she gives Nebraska some great experience as a senior. Cochran is blocked. Nepo setting Cernich. Schoenfeld can't get to it, and Nebraska's on the board. That left side hitting position will be very important tonight because Reitzma on the right is going to be covered very well. That will leave the left side open, and Zernich definitely had a nice arm swing. Headbeck serves again. Played by Schoenfeld. Here's the minus. Kept in play by Zernich. Nebraska will have to set it free. Bonnie Bremner running the show for the Lady Lions, and Terry Zemitis powers one through. Terry Zemitis is so versatile. She's got about four great arm swings. She can transfer, move around, and you can see there, she just went straight for that seam in the block. Corver with the kill. Part of that athleticism, Nebraska is probably the most athletic team in the country, and you see Megan Corver get up. Huskers trailing by two. Reitzman now in the back row with the serve. She plays the dunk by Bremner. Rolled over by Cernich. Great job by Kachiamani to keep that in play. And Penn State sets it free to the Huskers. Nepo will go to Cernich again. She gets the kill. Again, they find that left side open. Cernich doing a nice job finding the open spot on the floor. Lisa Reitzman will try and tie it now. Penn State got out to a 3-0 lead. And the Huskers with their All-American in the back row will look to even it up. Zemitis is blocked. Nebraska's call for the net violation. It's on Megan Korber and the side out to Penn State. Serving now for the Lady Lions is one of those fabulous freshmen, Kerry Schoenfeld. Played by Krondak. Here's Cernich with another attack. She's wide. Again, you saw Fiona Nepo go with the jump set. She's trying to place the ball high enough so the hitters can hit over the block. But they've got to calm down a little bit because they're going too long every time. On a slide, Corver with another kill. Beautiful quickness on that backslide. She gets to the outside so fast. Watch this. The blockers can't even seal out to the antenna before Corver puts it down. Terrific serve by the Huskers. Zemitis whistles one past Reitzma. Well, the passing is what's setting up everything right now for Penn State. They're probably the best passing team in the country, and that's getting their ball control. Their offense is starting to flow, and they're just outpowering Nebraska right now. They're a phenomenal team in the back row. Korber is blocked there. Here's Reitzma out of the back row. Zemitis was there, and it's rolled over by Kammer. Nepo with the dunk. Sophomore setter, but she's just a freshman in terms of setting experience. 
and she is so heads up. Not only is she athletic and can get up high enough for that great dump, but she is just all around athletic. Such a presence on the court for Nebraska. Corver serves. Here's Bremner. Setting Kachimani off the block, and she gets the side out. We've scored six points in this match, had several side outs, and we're still in game number one. And Holly, it feels like we're in the middle of this thing. This is really, really intense. They're not wasting any time. They're going really quick on the offense. Brondack. Jamie Kronick really coming on strong at this point in the season. Just a sophomore out of Lincoln, Nebraska. Playing at home. Nepo with a floater, and that's a good one. Tip by Cochran, and Krondak can't keep it in play. Beautiful tip by Christy Cochran. Christy Cochran is one of those Penn State prototypes we talked about earlier. She's only 5'9", but she's so athletic. Watch her leaping ability here. Up, fakes out the blockers and gets it over. Reitzman, unstoppable on the right side. Reitzman is just, you said it the best, she's unstoppable. Penn State knows that. Russ Rose said, Terry's going to get hers tonight. We're not going to stop her. They've got to focus on stopping the other hitters. In the middle, Kachiamani hits it on the line. Pretty play by Lauren Kachiamani. The crowd certainly doesn't like that call, but Ketchiamani does a nice job there with a sharp angle. They're really mixing up their arm swings, Bill. They're going line, they're going cross court, real sharp angles there. Ketchiamani checks out, and here's Claudette Otero, a defensive specialist, checking in. She's a senior. Kate Cernich, another senior with the kill. Kate Cernich was the star for Nebraska in last year's national final. She kind of came out of nowhere and had 25 kills in leading the Huskers to the title. The key to that was you saw how low Fiona Nepo had to go to make that a good set. She went all out, chased down that bad pass, and did a nice job of converting it. Still 4-2 Penn State early on game one. Four pass that time by Kammer and it's rolled wide by Zemitis. And finally, Nebraska breaks the ice. They get another point to cut the lead to one. You'll see Zemitis rotate in midair and change her arm swing after she's already gone. And it's an ace for Hedbeck. Maria Hedbeck tore a rotator cuff, and so she's been relegated to back row and serving duty, but you can see she hasn't missed a beat. She leads the team in service aces with 37, make it 38 now on the season. Zemitis on the slide. The Huskers got the block, and Hedbeck plays it. Reitzma, she's blocked, tries again. Otero was there. Cochran with the kill. Cochran hits off the block there. Nice sharp angle again. Penn State really playing the angles early here, Bill. Nepo, quick to Corver, and she hit the net on the follow through. Penn State's back on top 5-4. You don't think these teams are excited, do you? They are so hyped. This is going so fast. I was thinking about the two of us. I'm not sure we have enough energy to last a match like this. <laughs> Side out, Nebraska. We were talking about that this is a tough place for Penn State to come into and have to play. But their seniors said, hey, we've played here so much, it's like a home court for us. We'll let our freshmen know what to expect. And they've really been very poised early on. Schoenfeld is dug. It's set free by Reitzma. Zemitis gives him another chance. Nepo is dug. Schoenfeld again, looping it over. Kept in play by Nepo. Oh, my goodness. Cernich with the attack and a net violation whistle against Bremner of Penn State. That is an amazing up by Reitzma. She lays out for the spatula and puts it up. What makes this even more amazing, 6-4 going to the floor that fast. And Reitzma serves. We're tied at five. Zemitis with the kill. Terry Zemitis, very effective on that slide. She's doing a nice job going quickly. She's doing a tight slide, so the blockers have to get there faster, and she's been able to take advantage of it. There's the freshman setter, Bonnie Bremner. Her sister Julie played for the U.S. national team, and she brings a load of experience as a true freshman. Cernich blisters one for the kill off Cochran. 
boy, you don't see the back row break down very often. That tells you what kind of heat Kate Cernich was bringing. Look at this. The block is late getting over, but it didn't matter because they hadn't sealed to the antenna. Line was wide open. Huskers trying for their first lead. Canmer hits it on the line for the kill. And a side out back to Penn State. You just hate it when you get caught with those deep corners. Deep corners can be very deadly on serving. Zaminas will serve. Kachimani is back in for Penn State. Nepo keeps it alive, and it's a free chance for Penn State, but they're scrambling. Looped over by Cameron. Here's Krondak. Brimmer found the open area. That time, Kate Cernich had released and moved up a little bit too far, and again, left that deep right corner completely exposed. 6-5 Penn State. And a service there on Terry Zaminas, Nebraska. We'll take the side out and into Nebraska's lineup. Renee Saunders and Tanya Tauke checking out Korber and Hedbeck. There's Tanya Tauke, a 6'3 freshman. We have a lot of youth in this match. Oh, both clubs. I, I hate to see what's going to happen next year. <laughs> <laughs> we hate to look forward to next year, but they are so loaded, both sides. Saunders with the floater. Played by Kachiamani. Bremner going to Cameron. She's got the kill off the block. One of the things Nebraska was working on in practice was stopping Kammer. Kammer was so effective last night, they thought if they could control number 10, that's Kammer, they would have a much better shot. Tauke with the kill. And the freshman delivers for Nebraska. She's averaging 1.48 kills per game with a 318 hitting percentage. And she is so great. She's very thin, but she's so tall with that long arm swing. She just rifles it straight down. A long slide by Kachiamani off the hands of Saunders. Lauren Kachiamani went a long, long way to get that attack, and it paid off. You know, she's interesting. She's a 6'2 player. They're going for those bigger players, as we mentioned. But she's a live body. She is so mobile. She was a diver when she was younger, so she's great. got great body awareness and can really fly around. Nepo quick to Tauke. Great dig in the back row by the Lady Lions. But Penn State can't keep it in play. Side out, Nebraska. Jamie Grondack will serve for the Huskers. Sean Bell hits it high and long, and Nebraska's tied it at six. This time, Penn State gets caught thinking too high. She went high for that because she's trying to hit over the 6'4", Lisa Reitzma. She didn't get it to drop in the back row. Game one, six all for the East Regional Final. Kachimani in the middle, hits it long. Nebraska leads for the first time tonight, 7-6. Krondak serves again. Oscar's really using that floater serve against Penn State. Great up by Cernich. Reitzma up the block for the kill. But Nebraska has settled down a little bit. They've calmed down. They're running their offense, and their defense is paying off. Nebraska has reeled off four in a row, three in a row by Jamie Krondak, and that kill gives Nebraska an 8-6 lead. Penn State has called its first timeout. Holly, these two teams were very even in the final polls. Penn State third, Nebraska fourth, and the, the regular season statistics bear that out. This is very close. It is very close. Penn State with a little bit better record, and their stats are a little bit better, but there's not much difference. You can see they usually average more kills, and their blocking is better than Nebraska, which is rare because Nebraska is usually the best in the country at the net. Russ Rose, I think, really enjoys bringing his team in to Lincoln to play. They've been here so much. They know where to go. They know how to survive through this tough Nebraska crowd, and they come out of the timeout and get the side out back. Well, Russ Rose was so loose and fun and just, you know, joking around during practice. It didn't seem at all like a coach who was trying to get on to the national championship. He was so relaxed. So was his team. Tauke loops one over. Penn State with a chance here. Schoenfeld, block. Good coverage by Zemitis. Schoenfeld to try again. This time it's covered by Nepo. Cernich tipping over. Kachiamani flying in. Here's Reitzma cutting in front of the block and hitting it wide. A rare hitting error by Reitzma. She's got such a great percentage. 
She's a left-handed hitter, and so that really throws the blockers off sometimes because, you know, volleyball is a game of inches, and your block doesn't seal over far enough. It's tough, but that time they made the adjustment and stuffed her. She hit it low into the arms of Terry Zemitis, and Penn State has come back to tie it at eight. So it was a good timeout for Russ Rose and company. Cernich with another swing, and she's blocked. Schoenfeld is getting a lot of swings tonight. She gets the kill off Reitzma's arms, and Penn State has regained the lead with three in a row. Reitzma tells her team, my fault, tries to regroup. Saunders with a good pass this time for Nepo, and that time Reitzma comes through. Cochran is now in the front row on the left side. Christy Cochran at 5'9". You'll see Reitzma hitting at her and trying to take advantage of that height differential. Lisa Reitzma is arguably the best right side hitter in the nation, but they will use her not only on the right, but in the middle, and they'll also use her on the left like they did right there. Oh, she's so versatile. Husker's trying to tie. Zamitis is blocked. Great coverage by Penn State. My goodness, what a great play in the net. And it's Weissman who finishes. Back and forth they go. That time you could see Terry Zemitis telling her teammate they've got to get closer in. They don't, they need to seal that block at a different spot because of Reitzma's left-handed swing. And they were too far outside that time. Schoenfeld with the kill. Schoenfeld brings a little heat. Oh Freshman. She didn't look like it on that arm swing. Great arm swing, very quick off the ball. Christy Cochran serving. Here's Cernich, tipping it over and getting the side out for Nebraska. She has improved so much over the last two years for Terry Pennant. Well, it's interesting, last year, she was really one of the last resorts on the team. They had three All-Americans. They didn't need to go to Kate Cernich very much. This year, they've had to go to her, and she's filled that role nicely. Here's Schoenfeld with another attack. Off the hands of Krondek, out of play, side out, Lady Lions. Schoenfeld averaging 2.45 kills per game. As we mentioned earlier, she worked her way into the lineup. She's really only started the last seven regular season matches and these two tournament games. Heidi Roddinghouse into the lineup for Penn State. This is her first appearance, and she serves. Good pass for Nepo. And Corver. Hits it wide, but there's a touch. Side out back to Nebraska. We're tied at nine in game number one, just for the East Regional Final Championship. Bill, it's strength against strength. It's power against defense, and they have not disappointed so far. Cernich taking Roddinghouse wide. Coming back to the other side, Cameron. Reitzma out of the back row. She's done. And Krondak put it away, yes! Nebraska finding the open spots on the floor. Penn State is so tough defensively, but right there, she can see. She goes off the angle, off blocker, and they can't pull it out of the back row. Hammer with a poor attack, that's into the net. Nebraska has up its lead to two. Now, Holly, as we get into the latter stages of game number one, we have seen a lot of emotion already on the floor. How big would a win for one of these teams be in the early going, more so than just taking a one-game-to-none lead? Well, I think emotionally it would be huge. There's such a big Nebraska fan base here that I think a win by Penn State would really quiet the fans, maybe take them out of it a little bit. So Linus does her part with a kill there. Side out, Lady Lions. These teams are also so closely matched, Bill, that I, it's harder to come back from a first game loss. This is a match you don't want to play from behind. Great play by Schoenfeld. Looped over by Kachimani. Nebraska has the chance here. Reitzma again out of the back row. Played by Zemitis. And Terry sets it free and rolls it over for the point. A little off-speed shot there. That was very deceptive. It came over like a just soft little hit. Reitzma just settled into it just going to uh, easily dig it, and then it dropped like a rock right in front of her, out of her reach. Zemitis out of the back row. She serves. A good one at head back. Trondak, block. Nepo again. This time it's a slide to Corver, and nobody's home. Kachiamani late getting over on that block. It was wide open for Corver. 
right here, you can see Kachiamani kind of frozen there in the middle. Korver splits that seam, and it was a big seam. Yona Napo, Nebraska sophomore setter, directing traffic. Here's another sophomore, Renee Saunders. And again, she uses that floater. Cammer. And the senior delivers. Angie Cammer, a try captain for Penn State. You know, the offense has been going so fast, we haven't really had a chance to focus in on the setters. But Bremner and Nepo, both very young setters, and they are doing a tremendous job leading their offense. Kauke punches it into the corner for the kill. Side out Huskers. Good rotation now for Nebraska with Fiona Nepo going to the back row and serving. She's a good server, but she'll have three attackers now at the net. And three blockers. Cochran gets the kill off the arms of Lisa Reitzman. Wiping it off laterally. It's a good shot. She hits it hard enough to use the blockers to her advantage. Let the ball go out. Penn State with the floater. Look at Nepo go to work. Reitzman with the kill. Oh, that was huge, Bill. Nepo struggling, slides across the floor, jumps up just in time to set it, and it's a great set. Watch this. Fiona Nepo, she's everywhere. Slide, <laughs> roll, up, set, and slam. My goodness. Wrightsman will get the kill, but the crowd knew who made that play. That was Fiona Nepo. But Penn State answers back with a side out. 11-10 our score in game number one. There you see Lisa Wrightsman. She is so shy and quiet. But this year, because she's an upperclassman, she's been forced into that leadership role, and she really has embraced it, Bill. Reitzman has six kills in game one. Zemitis in the early going seven for Penn State. Reitzman with the tip. Covered by Cochran. Set free by Otero, who has come back in. There's Reitzman along the line for the kill. That was huge because they had three blockers up. A triple block in the air, and Reitzman finds a way to put it to sleep anyway. Megan Corver comes back in for Nebraska, so the Huskers fortify their front line. Renee Saunders, the back row specialist, checks out. Tauke, Nepo, Krondak, Cernich, Corver, and Reitzman for the Huskers. And a service error by Tanya Tauke. You'll only see Nebraska bring in a back row defensive specialist and server about every other rotation. That's why Tanya Tauke is back there serving when usually she wouldn't be in that position. Trying to save up for those later rotation problems. Stacy Mazur has come in and Penn State immediately serves at her. Cernich with the kill. Kate Cernich with a great decision there on her shot. She goes cross court angle. Set that Penn State lineup for you. They've got Bremner. That was Cammer. Here's the minus with the kill covered by Nepo. Bremer. And a net violation on Nebraska. Cochran Otero are also on the floor along with Schoenfeld for Penn State. 11-10 our score. We've been here for a while. There's Bonnie Bremer. Nebraska still leading by one. Trying to get the side out. Tipped by Cernich and Zemitis is there to close the door. Zemitis hung in the air just a little bit long enough. Look at this. It's like she's got a little hang time here. Up and at the last second off the fingertips. So Midas is one of the best blockers in the country. Not the best. Cernich is dug. Nepo with the kill! Nepo showing her poise. She gets up at only 5'9". She does not lose anything in leaping ability. Watch this. She'll leap. Just hits it away from the block. She's smart because she could see those blockers right in front of her, so she cut it back on an angle. Penn State has tied it up at 11. And a roll shot by Kander falls for the kill. This is a vulnerable rotation right now for Nebraska with Reitzma in the back corner. They're seeing that, you know, she's been a little bit slow to play up and release on some of those, leaving a wide hole, a big donut for that tip. Reitzma plays it to Nepo. Here's Krondak. Nebraska needs a kill and they get one. Jamie Krondak, just a sophomore. She had 11 kills in the first two games last night versus Louisville. She's been potent for them offensively, and that one went right through the arms of the blocker. Nebraska with the side out. 
Cameron rolls it over. That time Reichman was there, perfect. Mazur punches it over. Flying dig by Christy Cochran. Reitzma out of the back row with the kill. Reitzma out of that D position. Penn State worked on digging Ds. If you play along the back row, you, you label it from left to right, A, B, C, D. So she's hitting out of that D spot. Penn State knows that's a favorite shot of hers. They've defended against it in practice, but that time it's just too powerful. 12-11 is our score. Game number one. Terry Pettit's team has the lead. Russ Rose has used his second timeout as his team tries to stay in this one and tries to block out this incredible Nebraska crowd. Penn State again starting three freshmen. He knew that this would be a difficult environment, but he was confident. He told us earlier he was confident in his freshmen. Well, I think it worries. Any coach would say that they're a little concerned when 50% of their lineup is freshmen and, and the next person also uh, didn't play at all last year. So, but I think, you know, they got us this far, so I think we have to give them the nod. And there's something to be said for the ignorance of youth. They go out there, they play hard, they uh, have fun, and I think that's why, uh, you know, a lot of us are still in coaching. He's a very confident head coach. He knows what his team can do, and he felt very confident and comfortable in putting those freshmen into the lineup throughout the year. Bremner's been there all season long, but Schoenfeld has come on strong, and the Kachimani has been tremendous in being an All-Big Ten selection. Looks like a genius. Well, probably the biggest key for them right now is that Bremner doesn't act like a freshman as far as leadership goes. She's very vocal. She runs her offense like a little general, and she is so, she's always coaching, going up to other players, telling them what they can do. Free ball for Jamie Condat. 13-11 Nebraska. Now, Holly, we talked to Terry Pettit earlier today. He said, anytime my team gets to 12, I'm very comfortable with the people I have on the floor. He thinks they can finish better than any team in the country. And Mazur finishes there. Game point number one for Nebraska, 14-11. A win here would be huge. Russ Rose goes to his bench, and he brings in a substitution to try and stop Nebraska's momentum. Checking in is Nikki Higley. Nebraska by three, the crowd on its feet. Net violation on Nebraska, Penn State survives. That was a very important play. Bonnie Bremner was there. There was an overpass that Nebraska could have easily terminated, but Bremner stuck her hands up and hoped for the best, and it worked out. Hammer has come back in, Higley is out. Bremner serves at Korver. Here's Krondak. And it's blocked for the point. Here come the Lady Lions. I love how emotional Krondak is. Look at her. You think they want this? <laughs> Nebraska, keep in mind, has only used one timeout. Poor service received that time. Here's Reitzma rolling it over. It's another free chance now for Penn State. Kachimani can't get there. Bremner won't make many mistakes, but that was one in a crucial situation. Hurried it too much. Game point number two for Nebraska. Great set that time, and the Huskers block it for the point, and Nebraska takes game one. You'd think they took the match. This crowd is going crazy, Bill. They know how important it is to get a first game win against Penn State. Reitzman closes out that block. She gets there in time. Watch this. She doesn't get faked out by the approach. She closes over, seals off the block, and it's history. It's the emotion of a win, but Nebraska takes game number one. There's still a whole lot of action left to be played here in Lincoln. Nebraska leads it one game to none. With Holly Rowe, I'm Bill Dolman. Welcome back to Lincoln, Nebraska. We're in the East Regional Final, and Nebraska has taken game number one, 15-12. Last year, Nebraska won the national championship with a team that was very driven to win that title. This year, the, the repeating 
is up to a very young team, as Terry Pettit noted. This team would like you to think that they're looser and whatever. This team didn't get to where it's at without being driven. They are, and um, they're very focused. Um, I'm impressed with their commitment. I'm impressed with their character. Um, they, they may not say what they think or say what they believe they're going after, but, um, you know, they're there. Holly, he's very confident in this team that he has in 96. Well, we talked to Reitzman last night in practice, and we said you seem like a much more fun group as we take a look at the stats here. And uh, I'll finish that thought, but first of all, let's get to this. Kills, very even, 29 for Nebraska. I think probably I'm, I'm surprised by the digging. Nebraska out digging Penn State at this point. And there's a look at Terry Pettit. But what we were saying is that the team is a lot more fun. They joke around. They're a little bit more loose this year. Last year, their whole focus was one championship, one focus. And Wrightsman said, yeah, we're having more fun. But uh, as Pettit said, don't let that deceive you. Fun doesn't mean they're not intense. I like the way he said that. They're driven. And they're very confident. They had a big win over Texas to win the Big 12 championship back in November. And I think Nebraska was a team that was going along thinking, well, let's see how far we can take this ride. And they beat Texas, and all of a sudden their confidence level really, really increased. And they're off to a good start here in game two with a block for the point. Solo block by Jamie Krondak. That's a big confidence booster when you go solo. Penn State scrambling. Schoenfeld, she's blocked. Schoenfeld again. This time goes high off the block. She's covered by Saunders. Reitzma. Great play by Nepo to keep it alive, but it's a chance now for Penn State to get the side out. Nebraska responds. Krondak attacks into the net. Swing was too low on that. Krondak already had her approach set. Hits it right dead into the net. Lauren Cacciamani with the serve. Good pass for Nepo to handle. Mazur with the kill. Here's the unsung hero of the late season for Nebraska. Well, it's interesting. Mazur played a lot last year. She played in, I think, 29 out of 33 matches. And this year, they've used her sparingly. They didn't play her a lot last night, but I think they were hiding her as a little bit of a secret weapon so Penn State couldn't scout her last night. Rolled over by Cochran. Tipped by Reichsma. Great cover play by Schoenfeld. And the Lions don't communicate, it falls to the floor, and Nebraska has upped its lead two to nothing. This is what losing a first game does to you. It makes you second guess yourself. Who takes it? Who takes it? Usually Penn State doesn't make those kinds of mistakes. They're more confident than that. It's a minus with a four pass. An ace for the Huskers and Nebraska takes a 3-0 lead. You'll remember in game one, it was Penn State who got out to the 3-0 advantage. Well, you'll see the strategy here is to serve short. Try to make Zemitis and Cochran handle the ball and take them out of the offense. This time it's a good pass for Bremner. Zemitis is blocked. Kachimani scrambles. Set free by Schoenfeld. Cernich tips it. Bremner. Set free by Penn State, and it falls. Nebraska's caught napping this time. You get lulled into watching the rally, and when that happens right here, you're trapped by just a simple bump over the net, right in the hole. Mazur with the kill. Nebraska going to a quick shoot set, and Mazur with such a fast arm swing, no time for the block to even react. How even is this match? Nebraska and Penn State each hitting a 3.23 clip in that first game. But Nebraska has the advantage. Head back, just touch the top of the net with a serve, and the error sends the side out for Penn State as they try to get on the board here in game number two. Tipped by Reitzma. Great coverage by Cameron. Zemitis, Reitzma. And it's Zemitis who gets the win right there. You know, Penn State today in practice did this awesome drill. It's a cover drill where they just smack the ball into them and they have to react. That's what makes them so good defensively is their split second reaction as you saw right there on that block. Bremner with the kill. We haven't seen Bremner go with the dump very much. She's starting to see where it's open and go with it a little bit more here in game two. 
Schoenfeld serves. Here's Reitzma going off the block and over the outstretched arm of Christy Cochran. Reitzma had eight kills in that first game, give her nine now. Zamitis leading the way for Penn State with seven. Incidentally, Kate Cernich also had eight for the Huskers. Here's Cameron. She's got to get up on track for Penn State, and it's miss hit by Zamitis as she is as she and Cameron collide at the net. That's why you've got to talk. One of the things that uh, Terry Pettit was telling his team in practice is when you're talking in a match, you've got to talk louder because the crowd is so loud. You've got to compensate, and that's something Penn State hasn't done a couple of times. Zamitis goes high, and it's too high and long. And Nebraska leads it by three again at 5-2. And that'll bring Russ Rose off the bench as he uses his first time out. Game number two, Nebraska leads it one game to none, and they have the advantage in game two at 5-2. Huskers love playing here at home. They've got a 32-match winning streak here in the Nebraska Coliseum. And look at that, 76-2 and two in their last 78 home matches dating back to 1992. But as we said in the open, Penn State owns one of those victories. That's true, but I've got one better for you. In the <laughs> 90s, Nebraska is 107-5 and five at home. They've never lost a Big 12 or a Big 8 match here at home. That's 100 and something and 0 all-time in conference play. 114 and 0. Kachiamani out of the back row with the kill. One on one, Kachiamani can take Megan Korver. She's got so much power and she can hit around Korver. You don't want to isolate Kachiamani with one blocker. Comes by Nepo, played by Zamitis. And set free by Schoenfeld and she rolls it wide. seen any of these young players very frustrated yet. I mean, they've just been poised, lots of composure. Nobody's really flustered at this point, Bill. Turnick serves, and the senior serves long. Nebraska's still up by three. Let's set the lineup real quick for you. For Penn State, Bonnie Bremner, Terry Zamitis, uh, Schoenfeld is on the floor along with Angie Kamner, Lauren Kachiamani, and Christy Cochran. Corver. Locked out of bounds for Nebraska. Megan Corver, Fiona Nepo, Jamie Krondak, Kate Cernix, Lisa Reitzma, and Maria Hedbeck checks out, and Tanya Taffy comes in for Terry Pettit. It'll be Megan Corver doing the survey. Cameron. Reitzma again out of the back row. The block is there. Kachiamani. Huge block by Kachiamani and Cochran. Boy, they are nice, nice players. I love this Lauren Kachiamani. She's brand new. And look at this. You can see they kind of got the footwork crossed up there. Christy Cochran was scrambling, trying to get around on the block, but she got up just in time. An overpass. Penn State has a chance to make the Huskers pay. Another one. Schoenveld off the hands of Cernich. Penn State's got another point. They close Nebraska's lead to two at 5-3. You and I saw the practices earlier today, and Penn State was very, very loose. It's, they're having a lot of fun in their practice, but there, there was one player who seemed to be a little bit tight. It was Schoenberg, but she's responded well tonight, and they've gone through it a lot. Well, the pressure's on her because she's new into the lineup. She's eager to make something happen. She doesn't want to make mistakes. And I think you're right. Out of anybody, she was probably the most stressed that we could notice. <laughs> you had to look hard, though. <laughs> Krondak is blocked, and Penn State's on a roll. Christy Cochran, it's three in a row for Penn State, and they tied it at five. Five all is our score. Nebraska's coach Terry Pettit uses his first time out. We're in game number two here in Lincoln. Tied at five in game number two with Holly Rowe. I'm Bill Dolman. East Regional Final, Nebraska took game number one, 15-12. Penn State, Holly, is a team, like we talked about in the open, is a, is a very good defensive club. But look, Nebraska has the advantage in digs already. Very surprising statistic. Nebraska is out defending Penn State right now, but it's been very even. They're not running away with anything, even though the numbers are dramatically different. You're right, the, the longest run of points we've had in the match is four, and that was back in game number one. 
The timeout works for Nebraska, stopping the Penn State momentum for the time being. Nebraska with the side out. Kachimani gets the kill and gets it right back. Nebraska has just a few momentary letdowns where their back row is just playing a little bit soft. It's just kind of flashing here and there. And then they get their uh, they get their concentration back together and regroup. Here's Jen Burtis, a junior out of the state of Pennsylvania, into the lineup. Another defensive specialist. Reitzman goes off the hands of Bremner. Again, Terry Zemaitis and Schoenveld talking after that block. Those two particularly are having problems setting the block in the right spot. Penn State's been on its game at the net in terms of blocking. They've outblocked Nebraska 11 to three and the last three points have come off the block. This time Cernich is dug and Zemaitis can't play it out of the antenna. Point Nebraska. Terry Zemaitis is so intense. You can see the look on her face. She is a competitor. We mentioned it earlier in the open, but she was the Big Ten player of the year last year. You can see why. And the service ace for Nebraska. The Huskers lead it by two. Jamie Krondak came into the match tonight, leading the Huskers with 33 service aces. That was a big one. And another terrific serve and another ace. It's got Russ Rose scratching his head. And the hometown girl makes good. That serve dropped like a rock. It floated across the net and then just took a dive. Those are the toughest kind of serves to return because you just can't get the timing there. Cochran dug by Reichsman. Cernich, she's blocked. We love watching Christy Cochran play. She's intense on every point. Right, I think earlier I called her Krondak. It is Cochran. She's so exciting. She's so athletic. Much shorter, but she skies every bit as high as Terry Zemaitis on that block. And Cochran will serve. Her teammates trail it by three, eight to five. And they go at Cernich. Good pass for Nepo. And they work it around to Reitzma. Cochran collides. Set free. Tauke. You've got to credit that to Fiona Nepo. She saw what was going on. Huge hole in the back deep middle. Look at this. Fiona, she can see out of the corner of her eye what a huge gap there is in the floor. Tauke with the quick middle offense slams it. Head back is in. Curtis with the dunk on the line. Went right past Lisa Reitzman, who was caught flat-footed. Well, that takes, that takes a little confidence to just dump it over the head of Lisa Reitzma. Beautiful pass by Roddinghouse. Dunk. Krondak sets it free. Bremner working some minus. Perfect play by Penn State. Neither team can make a run on this. We got off to a quick 3-0 start from Nebraska, but they just go back and forth. There's no real consistency as far as taking over the match at this point. Nepo with a good set for Reitzman. That's a terrific play by Fiona Nepo just to keep that ball alive. She's so athletic. She gets around so fast. They all say in the media guide, the coaches, she's definitely the most athletic setter they've ever had here at Nebraska, and that's saying a lot. Kept in play by Corver. And a two-hit violation against Kate Cernich. We haven't seen a lot of hitting errors tonight in terms of the referee's whistle stopping play. Oh, definitely. They've been playing very clean volleyball. And that's because both teams are so fundamentally sound. I mean, you've got two of the best fundamental teachers in the country in Russ Rose and Terry Pettit. Cernich will try and get Nebraska to side out. She hits it wide. Instead, Penn State closes to within one. Nebraska has controlled throughout game number two. There's Otero with the serve. And Krondak can't hammer it back over. Penn State has come back to tie it. Claudette Otero with the spark for the Lady Lions. You see why passing is so critical because nothing else works if that first pass is shanked. 
Cernich with the tip. Blocked by Korver. For the side out. You don't see balls drop very often with Penn State. Russ Rose had an interesting saying that I really like. He said, every ball in every day, each season, is kept off the floor. They don't like to let any ball drop, not even in practice. Yeah. They practice like that, they play like that. Camera is blocked out of bounds for the side out. I'd like to see Camera a little bit more involved in the offense. She was so hot last night in their semifinal match that she has really got to get more into it offensively. Corver is blocked, and Penn State has regained the lead. Angie Kammer, she's one of those seniors that's been such a solid player for them, and you see why. She gets up, seals off the net. Good block. Penn State is doing a tremendous job defensively, and that'll bring Terry Pettit off the bench to use his second time out. He waited a while to use it. You see Lauren Cacciamani, why she's so great, she's mobile. Watch her move around. She's off to the antenna, back into the middle. She's everywhere she needs to be. Penn State has scored the last five in the game. They lead it by two. Penn State has come back in game number two. The Huskers took game one 15-12, but right now all the momentum belongs to the Lady Lions of Penn State. 10-8 our score. And Bonnie Bremner continues to serve. And look at Penn State's numbers in the block category. 14-4 over a very good blocking team. Krondak tips it deep. Otero was there. Cochran off the block for the point. Cochran wipes off laterally off the two blockers' hands. You can see Megan Korber there trying to tell her team to refocus, calm down a little bit. Huskers with some poor passing in this run. Cochran sets camera, and the Huskers watch it fall on the line. Seven in a row now, the biggest run of the night. You really brought up the point, Bill, that it's the back row that has broken down for Nebraska right now. Much better that time. Can Corver put an end to this? She tried, but the Penn State block is there, and the ball falls on the line. Boy, that was a tough call. We're sitting right by this, and I don't know. I don't want to question the officials, but when the ball's moving so quickly, it's often hard to see if it hits right on the line or, or if it's wide. Krondak whips it wide. Penn State is at game point. Boy, they opened up this lead and have just run away with it in the last three minutes. Bremner wastes no time. Reichman into the block, and Penn State has come back to take it. Composure, Reitzma with a rare hitting error, especially out of the back row where she's a great, great hitter. And I think right there we saw maybe some composure break down a little bit for Nebraska. Their passing went south. They made mistakes on the back row calling balls out. A terrific performance by Penn State. Nebraska became a little bit unorganized there in the latter stages. And you can see Nebraska's a little bit demoralized right now. We're in the East Regional Final, and we're tied up at a game apiece. This is a great one. With Holly Rowe, I'm Bill Dolman. We welcome you back to the NU Coliseum in Lincoln, Nebraska for the East Regional Volleyball Final. We've got a terrific match going on right now. Nebraska with a 15-12 win in game one, but Penn State knocked the air out of Nebraska sales with a 15-8 win in game number two. And now it's time for Terry Pettit and his team to regroup a little bit. Well, they came out very strong. Their serving has been a high point for them. Right here, you see Maria Hedbeck dropping in the hole for an ace. But what's happened for Penn State, they've come back with tremendous net play. They are outplaying Nebraska at the net. Lauren Kachiamani, just a freshman. Look at her all over the place. And here we'll show you a close-up of why they're doing so well. Watch the forearm across the net, sealing off the top of the net so the ball has no way to get up and over the block. Tremendous wall put up by Penn State. We take a look at the numbers through the first two games. Nebraska does have the edge in service aces, as we saw in the highlight. But from there on out, it's a pretty even match. It's how you get to the blocks. 
blocks, and that's what's winning it right now for Penn State. We can see in the hitting percentages that Penn State has really out, out hit Nebraska. They're hitting 275, and Nebraska is at 182. But for game two, they hit negative .088. Penn State, all the momentum in the world right now. That was a huge win for them in game number two, and they trailed through the first half of that game. Nebraska came out riding that wave of momentum. They had the crowd behind them, and then all of a sudden, Russ Rosen company caught fire and really put Nebraska on the defensive. Nebraska's passing game broke down. Penn State's net play really elevated. And we've got ourselves a tremendous match the rest of the way in our hands. Well, Penn State felt like they should have hosted one of the regional sites and I think they're trying to make a statement here. Their cheer and what their uh, cheer after practice and here in the huddle has been is burn down the house. <laughs> they have no respect for this place. You know, they want to come in here and make a statement. And they're burning it down right now, Bill. They want to take over. Right now, the Nebraska crowd, as it's known to do, tries to become that seventh player for the Huskers. They can sense when Nebraska needs some help. Close to 5,000 people here at the Coliseum, Nebraska, number two in attendance. During the 1996 season, Hawaii, the attendance uh, king, better than 10,000 people they've had in the, in the NCAA tournament, 8,000 an average attendance on the year. Penn State opens up with the first serve of game three, and they're off to a great start with an ace. Cammer switches it up. She goes with the short serve, finding an open spot. Another floater. Krondak comes up to play it, and Nepo will go to Reitzma. She whistles it past camera for the kill. Lisa Reitzman really making a statement there. During the timeout or the last break in between games, Terry Pettit was calming his players, saying, hey, loosen up, just have some fun. Maybe try to just get their heads back into this a little bit. Sean Bell. Reitzman, block. Good coverage by Krondak, and it's set free by Nepo. Penn State moving so well. Nepo with the dig. And a net violation whistled against Nebraska. It's on Stacy Mazur. Stacy Mazur just kind of out of whack on that. She was knocked hard down to the ground, and the whole crowd gasped because she's had that left ACL problem with her knee, but she's okay. She gets the attack. Great dig by Kachiamani, set free by Zamitis. Saunders with a good play and a shoot set to Mazur. Mazur comes in in the middle puts it away. They've got to try to take advantage of the middle a little bit more. Reitzma on the outside is powerful, and so they've got to cheat in and take advantage of the middle because Penn State's playing more to the outside. They played it quick right there. That didn't give the block any time to set up. Penn State leads it 1-0. Kammer rolls it over to Headbeck. Punched over by Korber. Zemitis with the tip. Nepo was there. Reitzma plays the second ball to Cernich. And a net violation on Penn State. Nebraska's tied it at one. You bring out the weapons when you're down, when you're emotionally down, you go to what got you here, and that's the big guns for Nebraska. Headbeck goes long. You get the feeling, no, excuse me, Holly, you get the feeling Nebraska's trying to play catch up, and we're just early on in game three. But you're right, it's a state of mind. I think that they've gotten you know behind the eight ball mentally instead of playing to win you know it's a cliche but they're they're playing not to lose Sean Bell puts it way long Nebraska needs something good to happen and they lead it now two to one Lisa Reitzma 13 kills a lot of swings 35 attempts to Midas, a long way on the run. Nebraska's block was there, and it's a poor pass off the hands of Maria Headbeck. Boy, now Maria, Maria Headbeck is always their stalwart in the back row, and even she has kind of broken down a little bit. She's had two service aces down the stretch here, and uh, hasn't been passing as, as great as she usually does. There's a good pass to Nepo. Korver off Schoenfeld. That's definitely the best look that Korver gets. When they use her off of that back slide, that's her best weapon. She's quick and she's so powerful. Watch this approach. The block does not seal outside enough. And another service error by Nebraska. They'd only had three for the first two games. They've got two 
here in the early going of game number three. You saw the concerned look on the face of Kate Cernich. And you really can see that they're starting to second guess themselves a little bit. Corver. Two big kills in the game for Megan Corver. Corver is just so solid. Atlantic 10 newcomer of the year transferred back to Nebraska. She's playing without a scholarship. She's a walk on a boy. Any coach in the country would <laughs> salivate to have her as a scholarship player. And here she is a walk on for Nebraska. Kachimani. Lauren Kachimani, the freshman. Do you get the feeling that Penn State will have a good team for a couple of years to come? Mm. Terrific. Three freshman starters here in the regional final. Tauke, another freshman, and Nebraska's answers back. Tauke isolates the blocker one on one. She goes quick. I like the quick arm swing of, Ta of Tauke. Fiona Nepo now serving for the Huskers. Good pass for Bremner. Again, Kachimani on the slide, and she loops it over for the kill. Do you see the change up there? Hachimani's been going power, power, power. And here she just softly with an off-speed shot. She faked that out so well. That looked like she was taking a full arm swing, but instead just softly does a roll shot. There's a full arm swing by Reitzman. She's blocked. Zamitis out of the back row. Zamitis touch, and that's definitely what that is, but it is all heat. She is so great out of that back row B position. Angie Cameron with the floater. Quick to Tauke, Zemitis is there, can't play it. Tanya Tauke, the freshman coming in and having an immediate impact here when Nebraska was down a little bit. She's done some good things back to back. She has four kills and Krondak serves. Tachimani is blocked. Rolled over by Schoenfeld. Nepo to Tauke. Reitzma! Excellent decision. Lisa Reitzma could see that the defense had been sucked up by Tauke, and that back row was completely open. Watch this. Tauke goes fast. They get the dig, but everybody's up by the three-meter line, and Reitzma caught it. Schoenfeld is blocked. Zemitis recovers. Kachimani is blocked by Tauke. Cochran, we haven't heard a lot from her in this game. Great dig by Renee Saunders. It's tipped over by Reitzma. Penn State on the move again. And Zemitis just wound up way too much. Zemitis straight down into the net. Sometimes you get the feeling she's trying so hard to make something good happen. Look at that. It was a decent approach. She was reaching for the ball and then just shanks it right into the net. Oscars with the block again. Tauke bumps it to Cernus and she's got the kill. Terry Zemitis will uh, wish she had that back when she sees this later. That ball was going out. 5-2 Nebraska. The Huskers have uncorked the block here in game number three. Three blocks in their last two series. That equals what they had in the first two games. We've got a timeout on the floor called by Penn State. It's Nebraska by three. It's a new season on PBS. And we'll take you anywhere you want to go. To the ends of the earth or beyond to another place another time where one person can make a difference wherever you want to go the journey begins with us and if PBS doesn't do it who will who's watching who tune in dog's best friend and find out I can't live without dogs if I didn't have my dogs, it would just be in existence. Monday at 7 on Nebraska Public Television. This week on Statewide, a gold medal athlete and a teacher with a heart of gold, a committed statesman and a community with a commitment to rebuild. 
They represent the very best Nebraska has to offer. This week on Statewide, we share their stories and honor their contributions. The second annual Statewide Citizens Awards. Watch Statewide Friday at 8 on your Nebraska ETV network. It's a good start for Nebraska in game three. The Huskers lead it five to two. And they're trying to steal back some of that momentum that Penn State captured with that 15-8 win in game number two. Jamie Krondak continues to serve. Nebraska has scored the last three points in the game and Penn State comes out and puts a stop to Nebraska's run. Confidence builder comes from great blocking. That's what happened to Nebraska to get back into this game, Bill. They came out very flat. You could see they were doubting themselves, but then the block started happening for them. That's been a Nebraska forte over the past few seasons. They got away from it in this match, and now it's brought them back into it. Cernich attacks into the net. Nebraska got out of sync on that play. It looked like Renee Saunders may have played a serve that was headed out of bounds. It's Jen Burtis into the game now. The junior defensive specialist serving for the Lady Lions. They trail it by two. That time they let it go long. And the service error gives Nebraska the side out. Hey, I've got to say, I love Jen Burtis. Can we talk here? 5-2. <laughs> A player after my own short little heart. <laughs> you could post her up, maybe. Yeah, there you go. I'll take her one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> Nebraska with eight service errors in the match. Penn State now with four. Cochran, block, Nebraska can't keep it alive. Christy Cochran can bring the heat, only 5'9", but she is so strong. She is totally buck, probably the most fit player on either team, and she pours it on. Nepo, tapped over by Cernich, and a lift is called on Nebraska. That's a tough call, it looks like she fisted that, which would have been a legal hit. You can see the crowd, a very knowledgeable volleyball crowd doesn't like the call. Good pass from Krondak. Here's Reitzma. Great play by Zemitis out of the net. Free chance for Nebraska. Korver on the slide. Net violation on Penn State. Korver on the slide is very effective. You can see Penn State trying to react and get the block in place. Instead, they get tangled in the net. Reitzma serves. Zemitis with the tip. She finds the open area. Reitzman got caught flat-footed. That's what makes Terry Zemitis so powerful. She can go any direction. With just a slight rotation of the hand, she changes the shot completely and directs it to an open area of the floor. Heidi Roddinghouse is checked back in for Penn State. And Carrie Schoenfeld has come out. Penn State trying to tie. 5-4 our score. Cernich. No touch, tied at five. Back-to-back -back hitting errors by Kate Cernich is hurting Nebraska right now, Bill. Three straight runoff by Penn State. They tied it at five, and now Terry Pettit wants to use his first timeout. Terry Pettit said something in practice today that I really like. He said that the most impressive movement wins, whether it's the block or the arm swing. So he encouraged his players to be the most impressive. If they're going up for the block, make it the most powerful movement. They're going up for the arm swing, do the same. Past uh, the past mistake we saw is Kate Zernich. She went up impressively, but just miscalculated a little bit. And that went right into the net. Five all is our score. Sad story, Bill. One of the Nebraska cheerleaders that usually cheers for Nebraska at volleyball matches was in an accident and injured her spinal cord and is in the hospital. Best wishes to her and her family. And it's nice that the Nebraska players and coaches are all wearing a little, a little lapel tie for her. Tracy Jensen is the, uh, the injured cheerleader. We're in the Coliseum in Lincoln, Nebraska, the East Regional Final with Holly Rowe. I'm Bill Dolman. We're tied up at a game apiece. Nebraska took the first frame, 15-12. Penn State stormed back and took game two, 15-8. And here we are in game number three, all tied up at five, and it's Penn State serving with the momentum, and it's a near ace, a great play by Kate Cernich. It's set free by Reitzma. 
Bremner with the kill. Oh, what a great decision by Bremner. She doesn't dump it, she attacks it. You know, she's an interesting story. She gave up her senior year of high school, got a tutor, and went into a very intensive junior volleyball training program, traveled around the country, did service projects. Very interesting young lady. Penn State has reeled off five in a row, including two out of Nebraska's timeout. Cernich with the tip. Cochran with a great dig. Here's Korver. Bumped over by Zemitis. Cernich. Burtis with the dig. Cameron with the tip. Great rally. And it's Nebraska who takes it. Those are the kind of rallies you love to see in college volleyball. Bodies flying everywhere, players sacrificing, giving up the body for the great play. And that time Nebraska just happens to uh, out-hustle uh, Penn State. Nebraska now trailing by two. Bremner, Kammer, Kammer's at home. You got it, I was gonna say, Kammer brings the hammer on that one. A lot of power behind her arm swing. I said it before and I'll say it again. They've got to get Cameron more involved in the offense. I think she is a weapon that they could really exploit some of Nebraska's weaknesses with. Claudette Otero has come back in. Cernich with a good pass to Nepo. And Krondak saves it, but it's a free chance for Penn State. And Krondak gets it out of bounds. 8-5, Lady Lions. Again, a timeout called, and you can see Terry Pettit wasn't happy with how they came out of that last timeout. One of the problems I'm seeing right now, Bill, and it's something they were working on in practice with Fiona Nepo, is sometimes her set is too soft, and she's not getting the ball to rebound and go to the spot she wants. She's got to come in with a little bit more springy touch on that ball, get it out of the hand so it's not a trap set. Five is our score in game number three with Holly Rowe. I'm Bill Dolman. We're in game three of the East Regional Final in Lincoln, Nebraska. The Huskers, the defending national champion, taking on a Penn State team that's playing as good as anybody in the country right now. Well, they only lost two matches all season, Bill. That says uh, something about what kind of talent level they've got. Corver, Nebraska needs a kill and Corver delivers. It's like butter. She is so great on that backslide. She has been successful with it all night. Penn State has never recovered and never put up a great block for her backslide. Stacy Mazur is into Nebraska's lineup. She's provided a spark at times in the first two games. Corver with the serve. Cammer dug by Cernich. Here's Reitzma out of the back row. Block for the kill. Boy, it happens all the time. You get a great block up, and sometimes you get caught watching the block. Same thing happens to Nebraska. Wrightsma with an arm swing, and then the players just stand around and watch the ball drop. Nepo shoots it over to Mazur. Is that the spark they need in game three? The team's trading side outs. Penn State still has that three-point lead. Nepo with the short serve. Cochran. Nebraska's block was there. Krondak. She's blocked. Great dig by Otero. Tipped by Cochran. Nepo kept it alive, and she'll set it free and set it deep. Mazur with good coverage. Corver. Nepo again sets it free. 
Got Giamani with the kill. Nebraska scrambling. Oh, I love these rallies between these two teams because they are both playing some amazing defense. They are digging the ball like nobody's business. But it's Penn State that's moving much more confidently. They look much more organized than they have Nebraska on the defensive. The Huskers are scrambling to keep the ball in play. Well, Penn State's used to that scrambling style. That's what they're known for. And a legal set by Fiona Nepo. And it's a point for Penn State. Seven unanswered by the Lady Lions. Reitzma, finally. Reitzma with the right stuff on that one. She puts that down so hard. She's so tall that her hand connects with the ball at the top of the ball, and she just roofs it straight down. Krondak has been able to run a couple of points for Nebraska with her serve. She gets one there. Nebraska's to within three. Nebraska has used two timeouts. Penn State has one remaining. Cochran is long, but it's off the block. Cochran knew that. You could see her celebrating it, but uh, the crowd hadn't caught on to it. She saw the touch. Russ Rose calmly makes his notes on the bench. That's what you got to love about him. He's just so calm. <laughs> Quiet yet reassuring confidence. Reitzma, block! Schoenfeld was there with some itis. The second time we've seen that, the cover is not coming up on the block. You've got to protect your hitters. She's there, now step up and cover. Two hit violation whistled against Penn State. That's on Schoenfeld, the side out to Nebraska. Kind of a late whistle on that call. Penn State has reached double digits, 10 to 6. Mazur serves. Zemitis with the tip, and it's put down by Reitzma. We've seen some problems with the ones and twos in the middle. That's the one set and the two set. Bremner has struggled tonight. You can see she just hasn't connected with her hitter. Great serve by Mazur. Covered by Cernich, and she'll get the attack. Into the donut. Here comes the Nebraska crowd. Russ Rose will save his timeout and bring Burtis in back off the bench for Kachiamani. Mazur has served two in a row for Nebraska. She'll try and make it three. The Huskers trail at 10 to 8. Another good one. Team. When they when they put up a block, they rarely, rarely miss it. Nebraska has scored three in a row, and Nebraska's block gets a big point here. And or rather, Russ Rose has called a timeout. Talk about twin towers. That looks like a New York City skyline in the middle there. Corver puts up a huge block. Reitzma at 6-4. And you can see, I love that angle because it illustrates better than anything how you seal off the net. Any of you players watching at home, that's textbook. Get the forearms over the net, and then the ball has nowhere to travel. The last time Nebraska and Penn State hooked it up, Nebraska beat Penn State in the regional semifinal right here in Lincoln. Lisa Reitzman and the player of the year, Allison Weston, had 21 kills apiece for the Huskers. The minus a tremendous match with 22 kills. The hitting percentage, Nebraska was dominant, hitting just below 300. Penn State had a tough time getting the inning going against that Nebraska team, hitting at 116. Now tonight, it's reversed. Penn State at 272, Nebraska 197. Well, Russ Rose complains about having to go to this big lineup because of Big Ten play. He loves coaching the smaller team, but he can have no complaints tonight because it's that big lineup that is doing the battle at the net. This is the third straight year that Nebraska and Penn State have met in Lincoln in a regional tournament. Now, back in 1994, Nebraska was unbeaten, right, number one in the country, and Penn State played a phenomenal defensive match and knocked Nebraska off. 
We're seeing that kind of defensive effort again tonight. Cochran. She's dug. Cernich with the tip. Burtis. Zemitis with the kill. This Penn State team is everywhere. Look at them fly around. Zemitis there sees a huge hole in the middle, puts it down, but she was helped out by that back row defense coming up with huge digs. Corver with the kill. You can sense Nebraska's energy level picking back up. They were down at the start of game number three. They've gone to Corver and she's responded for them. Well, you've got to credit Nebraska. They've been very patient getting back into this. Zemitis, she's blocked. Megan Korber, slide over, seal it off, and Kate Cernich is there to just roof that. Zemitis with the tip. Nepo flies in to save it. And she sets it free. Cernich. And Schoenfeld in there. Another block. tell you what's going on in the Coliseum and it's Nebraska on a run. Both teams have used their timeouts. The Huskers now lead it 12 to 10. Rose will use the substitution. Kachimani is in. Listen to the Coliseum. answers for Penn State and quiets the crowd for the moment. Demitis is the player last night that told us she's not intimidated to, intimidated to play here. She loves being here. She thinks this is a great crowd. And she shows that she has no problem with how loud these fans are. Nebraska has run off six in a row. Corver, she's been huge. Free ball. Great play by Nepo. Zemitis attacks it into the net. Tough break for Terry Zemitis. She was stumbling. This wasn't a good approach. You could see she had to turn around quickly and then try to get a couple of steps in. And it was just a very awkward approach. I'll tell you what, this crowd is making our job pretty easy. They tell you exactly what's going on the hands of Mazer. I have to say, I love being here in Lincoln, Nebraska. This is one of the best environments in college volleyball. These fans are so knowledgeable. They're not rude and hostile to the opponents. And I just got to say, I really respect the fans here in Lincoln. Carver just got enough to keep it in play. But it's a free chance for Penn State. Camner looped it over. Carver. Husker scrambled. Mazer was there. Krondak, not a lot on that one. Cameron, Mazer, knocks it out. Penn State is weathering the storm. They've cut the lead to one. A service error by Terry Zemitis. You can see Terry there saying, my fault, my fault, just calm down, don't let it phase you. Trying to show some of that leadership. And Zemitis, only a junior, she'll be back again next year. Corber has checked out for Nebraska now. Renee Saunders is in. Saunders with a good serve. Cut 
Giamani is blocked. Good recovery. Cameron rolls it free. Reitzma. Russ Rose tells his players, if you don't dive after every ball, you won't be on the court. And you can see they didn't want to give up on that. Even though it's three rows up into the stands, Cochran is going after it. 13-11. Giamani with the kill. Nebraska did a good job reading that. They knew she was going to go angle on that. The player was there, just couldn't come up with the dig. Bremner serves. Good rotation for Penn State. The setter's in the back row. Krondak is dug. Saunders sets Krondak. Kill for Christy Cochran. I am just constantly amazed at the ball that Penn State comes up with, Bill. I mean, we've said it over and over, but they're not letting anything drop. They fight for every single ball. Grondek well off the net. Right spell. seen very many go-to players in the back row that they're not afraid to go to them anywhere on the floor. They need a kill, they go to Lisa Reitzman no matter where she is. That's tremendous confidence. Well, it's confidence because Reitzman is so versatile. She can play three positions, hit from anywhere on the court. She's left-handed, but she can, she doesn't get a full arm swing right, but she can power tip it. Nepo serves. Nebraska 13, Penn State 12. Off the top of the block, side out Lions. Terry <laughs> Schoenfeld has come in. Number seven. She's in the front row. Camera with the serve. Reitzman blocked. Schoenfeld goes cross court, gets the kill, and ties it at 13. Christy Cochran forced to set on that one because Bonnie Bremner had to make the initial pass. She puts up a high, nice outside five set. Mazer. What a heroic performance Stacey Mazer has put on in the last couple of weeks for Nebraska. She's been a tremendous spark plug tonight. When they've been down, she's come on and got some great things done offensively. Back row attack is whistled against Penn State. Russ Rose can't believe it. What a critical call. That puts Nebraska at game point. You can see the team captain, Angie Cameron, going over to question the official. She's the only player that's allowed to address the official, referee number one. Nebraska's best server, Jamie Krondak, for game three. that took it. The attack was long, and it's Nebraska 15, Penn State 13. The Huskers lead the match two games to one. The crowd's on its feet, and the Husker bench will tell you as well, it's Nebraska leading it two games to one. Welcome back to Lincoln, Nebraska. The Huskers have taken a two games to one lead over Penn State with an exciting and thrilling 15-13 win. But game three did not end without some controversy. Right there, you could see that uh, Kachiamani was called for the back row attack, and she was clearly in the front court past that three meter line when she took off. She would have to be on it or behind it before she could leap for that attack. Here are the numbers through the first three games. Penn State really still very dominant on the blocks, but Nebraska creeping up a little bit 
And the service aces, I think Nebraska's serving was really one of the keys that got them back into game three. Well, if we want to look way ahead, Penn State is 0-2 in five game matches. Nebraska 3-2, but we've got the matter of game number four. And the opening attack by Penn State goes wide. And Penn State, the Lady Lions are at the boiling point after the way game number three ended and the way game four starts. They thought there was a touch. Well, the official said and tried to explain to Russ Rose the ball was out before the touch. It was out first. Schoenfeld is blocked on the line. And the Huskers are carrying that momentum in the game four. 15-12 Nebraska in game one. 15-8 Penn State in two. And Nebraska in game three, 15-13. The Huskers block has resurfaced. Hit wide by Bremner. So we've had a role reversal. Nebraska came out flat, a little unsure of themselves in game three. And now Penn State trying to settle down. They're a little unsure right now. 3-0 Nebraska. Reitzma. If you go for an overpass, you do not want it to go to Lisa Reitzma <laughs> because she's just going to kill you. Four nothing Huskers. Kachimani with Smart. the tip. You see how she played Reitzma. She saw Reitzma go up with her, so she just hung up there a little bit, tapped it over her head, and totally caught Reitzma off guard. Kachimani will serve. Reitzma now, by the way, has 19 kills in the match for the Huskers. Nepo sets it free. Bremner to Zemitis. Dug by Cernich, but the Huskers can't play it out of the net, and Penn State's on the board. Katia Amani and Zemitis leading the way for Penn State with 13 kills apiece. Here's Reitzma. Great block by Zemitis. You don't block Reitzma very often, and that time Schoenfeld did a better job setting the block. Remember in the earlier games, she had struggled to set that block in the right spot, but that time she was dead on. Tremendous play by Angie Kammer with the dig. Bumped back over, and Penn State has reeled off three straight. Right here, you can see Schoenfeld helps it out with just a little fist over. That's quieted the crowd, and Terry Pettit has called the timeout. A great start to game four. <laughs> Nebraska got out to a 4 nothing lead. Penn State has come back with three in a row, again, with stellar defense. And watch, look at the block here. It's set in the right spot. They compensate for Reitzma's left-handed arm swing, picking it up much better now than they did in the earlier games. An early, early timeout for Nebraska. Will that come into play later? And a service ace for Kachimani. Jamie Krondak is one of Nebraska's best passers, and she just completely misplayed that. She gets another chance here. Nepo has to work to get there. And Reitzma hits it at Bremner. Schoenfeld rolls it over. Krondak with the kill. Krondak going over the 5-9 Cochran. Splits the seam of that block. Let's set the lineup real quick for you. Jamie Krondak, Renee Saunders, Fiona Nepo, Kate Cernich, Lisa Reitzman, Stacy Mazur for Nebraska. We'll get you Penn State in a moment. Here's the minus. She's done. Cernich forced it into the block, and she lost the battle. Christy Cochran, Lauren Cacciamani, Bonnie Bremner, Angie Kammer, Terry Schoenfeld, and Terry Zemitis for Penn State. We're tied at four. Bremner. Great back-to-back -back plays by Bonnie Bremner. What composure. She's a freshman. She's a teenager. And look at the composure. She's calm. She just goes up against much taller players and slam dunks them. Bremner again, this time she's dug. Reitzma, the block was there again. 
Zomitis. Oh, tremendous save by Kate Cernich. A chance for Nebraska. Again, great defense by Penn State. What can you say about that? The well, block is out of bounds. Carrie Schoenfeld with the kill. That time the block is off the up official. She even got in on that one. Schoenfeld, another freshman for Penn State, making a big statement offensively. Reitzma hit the official. Penn State has scored seven straight points. They lead it seven to four. I like how gritty this Penn State team is. They are not getting down when, when they really could be. They've come out and fought back. Reitzma got all of that one. That stops the Penn State run for the time being. Corver comes back in. She has been the bright spot for Nebraska. She has been the most consistent player, making no mistakes. Here's Schoenfeld off Reitzman's hands. Reitzman will get the attack. Cernich goes off the block. She took advantage of Bremner. Bremner pu puts up a fairly good block for 5-9, but you see how low she has to jump, and she just can't get there in time to seal it off. Headbeck with a service air. Boy, Maria Headbeck has had her problem serving tonight, and she's usually so consistent. Rock solid for the Cornhuskers. Schoenfeld has come out, and Heidi Roddinghaus has come back in. Roddinghouse with the serve. Cernich. <laughs> Two hits whistled against Penn State. Off the back of Terry Zemitis, and it's a side out to Nebraska. Free chance, tipped over by Cernich. Cammer. Zernich again. Kate Zernich struggled in game three, but she has brought out the gun for game four. It's a high outside set, awesome approach, and she hits off the shoulder of the block. Nebraska is inched back into it. They trail at 7-6. Zemitis. Block. Nebraska has made a good adjustment. Zemitis hurt them early off of that backslide, but they've adjusted to it, and they've been blocking her consistently now when she goes to that swing. On the line with the ace, Lisa Reitzman. That was right at the feet of Christy Cochran. Cochran was actually standing off the court kind of impeding uh, the ability of Heidi Roddinghouse to get to that ball, so it was a little bit of a mix-up there. Two players stacked so closely together. Terry Schoenfeld has come back in, the freshman. She replaces Roddinghouse. Nebraska has regained the lead with a four-point run, eight to seven. Kachimani beat Megan Korber. Side out, Lady Lions. Korber isolated the lone blocker on that one. She can't stop everything, and that time Kachiamani brings the heat from the back row. Juanette Otero has come back in for Penn State. Terry Zalinas has come out. Otero will serve. Great serve. Korber on the slide. Right at Schoenbell. Kept alive by Cameron. Well, Penn State was out of position, and Nebraska makes them pay. Side out returns to NU. Penn State really struggling on that last series, and, and you called it right on the head. They were just out of position. Nebraska saw a hole and buried it. Here's Kate Cernich. Tough serve for Schoenfeld. Cameron oh. whips it right down the line. Boy, I like her. I, I hate to sound like a broken record, but I would be setting Cameron more. She is so great. She goes down the line and blasts Fiona Nepo. Rondak. Cameron again. Block. Great coverage. Kachimani with the kill. 
So great offensively and defensively for the Lady Lions. Nepo tried the deception, and Cameron was there to reject her. Right there, she read that from the get-go. Uh, Nepo knock, is knocked out of it mentally. That play caught her off guard, and that time she had a decent set. Totally botched. You know, the thing I love about Fiona is she reads every emotion. It's right there on her face, on her eyes. When the coach is talking to her in practice, you can see it processing, and, and she's just so emotional. She has really been the spark, I think, emotionally for this team, and we haven't talked about it, Bill, but she is so enthusiastic. She's always joking around, building up for other players. She's just such a great asset to this program. They say she's the most athletic setter that they've ever had. The, the line of setters that they've had in Nebraska, Tish Delaney, uh, Lori Endicott, the U.S. Olympic setter, Christy Johnson last year, Nikki Stricker, who's an assistant coach in Nebraska now, on and on and on with All-Americans, Val Novak. It's a tremendous history and tradition of great setters that they had here in this program. It's an interesting story how they actually got her. She went to an Olympic training camp in Colorado Springs and some of the other players for Nebraska were there. And uh, she said, hey, tell your coach if they need a setter, I'm available. I'm not going to any school. So she kind of picked her up on an odd whim. Penn State leading Nebraska 10 to 8 in game number four. We're at the Coliseum in Lincoln, Nebraska with Holly Rowe. I'm Bill Dolman. Nebraska had the lead. Penn State has come back to take it. Penn State with the side out here. Reitzma off Kachimani's hands. That gives the Lady Lions this chance. Great dig by Kate Cernich. Krondak. Tri-captain, she's one of the seniors that has been such an impact for this team. Nebraska leads it two games to one. Harbor. Hello. Megan Corver is such a great addition. Watch this. Again, it's the backslide. They can't control her. Cha-ching. <laughs> Eleven eight, Penn State. Saunders serving it deep. Cochran with the kill. Angie Cameron, the senior, back to serve for Penn State. To the senior, Kate Cernich. Krondak is blocked. Krondak set so far outside, she really didn't have any option there. She couldn't go with an angle because she was so far out to the wide side of the antenna, and the block was there. Nebraska has used both of its timeouts. Reitzman out of the back row once again. Reitzman had a couple of hitting errors out of that back row, but now she's been unbeatable in this game. Here's Fiona Nepo. Nebraska needs a run. Cochran, she's blocked. Schoenfeld sets it free. They go to Reitzma. Tremendous dig by Angie Kammer. And it's Schoenfeld who puts it away. That's what great defense will do for you. That was huge because Reitzma went with a very quick shoot set. She hit that ball so fast the blockers couldn't get up. So the dig in the back row became very important. And Schoenfeld puts it away with the wipe off the hands. Stacy Mazur and Fiona Nepo don't connect. And game number four is turning out much the way game number two did. Back and forth they battled until Penn State reeled off. Ten straight to take it. Right now they're two points away. And can you say rally score? Well, I didn't Schoenfeld. plan anything. I didn't plan anything for tonight, Bill, because I knew. These two teams would be going five. Zolaitis with the kill. 7 straight 
Unanswered points for Penn State. Terry Pettit has used both of his timeouts. He'll bring in Tanya Tauke to try and stop the Lady Lion momentum for the time being. But the Huskers have a huge mountain to climb, trailing at 14-8. Game point number one. Tauke just got enough. That was lucky because that was a set that was just almost out of the reach of Tauke. It wasn't where she needed to be. She's got such long arms, though, she was able to reach it. Worked out well off of a bad set. Kachiamani comes out. And Jen Burtis comes in. Krondak will serve. Zomitis with the tip. Set free by Cernich. Put away by Penn State's Terry Zemeinis and Kerry Schoenfeld were both up there. Penn, what a team kill. Penn State has been very active the last five side outs at the net. You can see they've turned it up a notch with their net play. Game point number two. Turnage. Blocked. Weitzma. Zemeinis tried, but she couldn't get there. She could see that coming. Reitzma one on one with a shorter player. And you're just not going to stop Reitzma. I mean, let's face it. You're just not going to stop her. You may get lucky and get a block here and there, but she is going to hit for her averages. She's got 21 kills tonight. Nebraska needs a run that they haven't gotten at all tonight. Bonnie Bremner is well into the net. <laughs> she uh, is in the net in a big way. She was wearing and the She net. got her nose caught there, too. She kind of smashed into it. 14-9. Zemitis. Off the block of Kate Cernich. Game point number three. Zemitis tools that block. Corver and Zemitis. Excuse me, Corver and Cernich can't stop her. Schoenfeld for game four. Corver off the block. Bremner got caught flat-footed. I don't know what it is, but they have not adjusted to, to Megan Korber on that backslide. She's had it all night. She's only missed one. I think they've only blocked her one time off the slide. Nebraska trailing it by five. Reitzman with the serve. Cameron blocked. Tipped over by Korber. Cameron. Zemitis hit it on the line. Terry Zemitis is smart. She's such a smart player. She could see they had drawn all of the Nebraska defenders over to the left side of the court. So she called for the quick one in the middle, and she drifts it completely to the opposite side. 16 kills for Terry Zemitis. She serves for game four. Great dig by Terry. Rolled over at Reitzma. The Huskers scramble, and it's Penn State forcing a rally scoring in game five. Penn State went to their traditional defense. They dug every ball. Their passing was flawless, and their net play was unbelievable. You can see pass is a little suspect there, but in the back row, Penn State Digs that ball like they've done all night tonight. But in game four particularly, their digging really got them out of a big hole. Welcome back to the Coliseum in Lincoln, Nebraska. It's the East Regional Final. Penn State and Nebraska tied up at two games apiece. Nebraska taking games one and three. Penn State pretty dominatingly in games two and four, forcing this game four. This one is for a trip to Cleveland to play for the national championship. The loser and their season is done. Take a look at the statistics through game number four. This game has been won at the net. 18 blocks versus eight. You can't come into Nebraska and just wipe them out like that at the net. Nebraska has got to do a better job at the net in this rally scoring. Rally scoring, simply put, there's a point scored on every serve. In this situation, Nebraska is 3-2, Penn State 0-2 in 96. Reitzma with the kill, Nebraska lead. You have to think that a rally scoring match would favor a good digging team because that would 
prevent the other team from terminating. But if you go to right to set her and just let her pound away at it, Nebraska's got a great shot as well. Free ball now for Penn State. Cochran is dug. Reitzma, great dig by Cameron. Cernich, she's blocked for the point. Lauren Cacciamani. Cacciamani. Cacciamani has been tremendous. She is one of the most exciting young players in the country this year, Bill. Nepo goes to Reitzma, and again she's dug. Nebraska's strategy is a simple one. Go to Lisa Wrights, but Penn State is spreading it around. Schoenfeld gets the kill, and it's 2-1 Lions. Volleyball is a game of percentages. I'll steal that line from Terry Pettit, but Wrights can't kill it all the time. They're going to dig her every once in a while. She's long. So two Wrights attacks are stopped there. That's a big bonus for Penn State. Three in a row. Just called on Stacy Mason. That's got the Husker staff up off the bench. Boy, that's tough. Let's see if we can see it here. I, I don't know about that call. I did not feel like it was a lift. It was just off the fingertips. Penn State with a 4-1 lead. Nebraska timeout. Penn State with a 4-1 lead in game number five. And that's the play by Stacy Mazer that was whistled to carry. And that gave Penn State the lead. Mazer gets the kill there. She wasn't going to have any questions with this. She just spanked it. That way, there's no questionable call on that one. <laughs> this crowd was really into it in game number three. They were quieted in four. And right now, they seem a bit anxious, waiting to explode. Mazer sends it deep. It's played by Schoenfeld. She gets the attack. Kronak is there with the dig. Nepo sets it free. Cochran. Off the block for the kill. Cochran, I'm so impressed with her. 5'9", but she leaps out of the gym. She is so athletic. Maria Hedbeck has come in for Nebraska. She'll play the back row. Mazer has come out. And Cochran serves. Corver. Zemitis with the kill. The middle block is just not there for Nebraska. Nebraska has to step it up on the net, Bill. They're not doing a good enough job with the block. 6-2 Penn State. Corbin. There's that slide again. It's the electric slide, I think, because she has been on like a light bulb all night. This is the beauty of rally scoring. Penn State seems to have all the momentum, but Nebraska, with one point, is able to stop it for a moment, but Bonnie Bremner. Bonnie Bremner is like a pro. She is like such a veteran out there. You can see that her sister being a setter for the national team, the experience in the family, it has paid off. She is one of the best decision makers I've seen all year, especially for someone so young. Nebraska's crowd wanted to carry after the call that went against Stacey Mazur. They don't get it. Penn State gets the point, 7-3. Corbin. It works. You go back to it. Look at this, off the slide. They've got plenty of time. She takes a wide approach, so the blockers have time to get there, but they haven't been able to leash her power. Nebraska going to the bench and bringing little use Kim Crandall into the match. Wow. And that's a good serve. Will they go at her? Angie Cameron can go anywhere she wants. She's got the kill. You know, it's an interesting strategy by Pettit. You've got to wonder if he was just trying to save an entry for one of the other players or what he was doing bringing in the freshman that's not been used much. Eight to four is our score and rally scoring. The two teams trade sides, so we've come to a break. Penn State eight, Nebraska four. Well, we said it earlier, but one of only two teams to ever beat Nebraska here in the NCAA tournament was Penn State. 
They know how to do it, Bill. Nebraska is the defending national champion, and the Husker crowd can sense that championship may be slipping away. Terry Pettit talking to Stacey Major. Kim Crandall has come out. Nepo, Corver, Krondak, Headback, Cernich, and Reitzma for Nebraska. Zemitis with the serve for Penn State. Reitzma out of the back row, attacks into the net. Penn State now leads it by five. Bremner, Kachimani, Kammer, Cochran, Roddinghouse, and Zemitis for Russ Rose. Corver hits it wide. Penn State is now five points away. You cannot afford hitting errors. We've had two back-to-back -back hitting errors by Nebraska. In rally scoring, a hitting error is a point, and you just cannot do it. Tied at two games apiece, but right now it's all Penn State. Nebraska calls timeout. Well, Nebraska's 32-match home winning streak is in jeopardy. Again, the Huskers 76-2 in the last four years. One of those losses to Stanford, another one to Penn State in the 94 regional final. And Penn State has an opportunity five points away to knock Nebraska out of the tournament again in Lincoln. That block is out of bounds. Jamie Conda gets a point for the Huskers, and boy, did they need that. It was interesting, one of the seniors on Nebraska's team, number six, Heidi, or excuse me, on Penn State's team, number six, Heidi Roddinghouse, during practice told her teammates, you've got to step it up, you've got to get more intense. She was on that team that beat Nebraska and went on to the final four. She knows what it takes, and she's trying to share that with the rest of the team. Cammer, great dig by Saunders. Free chance, though, for the Lady Lions. Cammer again. And that got in the way. Krondak. Hit it long, no touch. Oh, tough shot by Krondak. She was doing the right thing. She saw that the deep corner was open. It was a good decision. She just was a little too excited. Nebraska has used both of its timeouts. Nepo really had to work. Krondak on the line. Beautiful. Nepo makes something out of nothing. And Krondak that time just leashed it in a little bit down the deep corner. Penn State has won 15 straight matches. They're four points away from their biggest win of the year. A service ace. Penn State has yet to use a timeout. And Russ Rose will use his first one. greatest servers on the team last year that's all she did is she came in and served and played back row she had an ace in the final four which she says is her greatest athletic moment and that uh, she comes back in a huge match and powers down another ace I want to remind you that this telecast is presented by authority of the NCAA. Any use of this program without the written consent of the NCAA is prohibited. The announcers for this program have been approved and contracted by NCAA Productions. High atop the Coliseum in Lincoln, the national championship banner from 1995 hangs proudly. The Huskers would love to put another one up there and become a repeat national champion. It's only been done three, four other times in history. At the beginning of the year, nobody thought Nebraska would have an opportunity to be this far. They got better and better, won the Big 12 championship, and they put themselves in this position. But Russ Rose, we talked about it with a very, very open. One thing that has eluded this man in a brilliant, brilliant coaching career at Penn State is a national championship. Otherwise, his teams have done it all. Conference championships, All-Americans. They need that gold ring, I guess you could say. Well, we know that Florida and Hawaii have advanced into the championship round. Nebraska trails it by four. Kachimani. Huskers keep it in play. Tauke. Tauke again. You look out on the floor, Nebraska's got four underclassmen on the floor. Penn State has two freshmen, a sophomore, and another ace. It's 
it's incredible the high level that these young players have made this match. Nebraska's to within two. Cochran with the tip and the kill. Cochran doing a nice job. She could see that Fiona Nepo was playing back deep. She saw the hole and Nepo made a valiant effort, but she just couldn't get there. We're in rally scoring in game five. Penn State three points away. Reitzma, block! Doesn't happen very often, we said it before, but boy, what an awesome sight to see them block such a powerful hitter. The best blocking team in the country, blocking the best right side hitter in the country. No answer that time. Wow, this is a dog fight, I love it. This is what college volleyball is all about, Bill. The winner moves on, the loser is done. Krondak serves. Nebraska trailing by three. Schoenfeld dug by Krondak. Reitzma. Penn State scrambles. Reitzma with the tip. Schoenfeld block. Reitzma roofs that block. The crowd was quiet. They're back into it, and Nebraska will not Penn State has called its second time out. It's Penn State 13, Nebraska 11 in game number five. You can see there on the camera shot, the fans are so into it, it's uh, bouncing up and down the camera on the platform. Penn State is two serves away from moving on to the championship round. Watch this. Reitzma powers it. She's usually a quiet player, but not tonight. Reitzma is letting the enthusiasm out. It's interesting that when Penn State knocked off Nebraska in 1994 and ended a 31 match winning streak, it seemed as though that was the single match that drove Nebraska to a national championship in 1995. Penn State comes in a year later looking for an opportunity to play for a national championship. Irregardless of who wins this match, this loss is really going to hurt the team that comes up short. After all the emotion, all the energy, the intensity, and everything that has come in to this point in the season, this one will hurt. Krondak will serve. Kachimani. Nepo is there. Set free by Reitzma. But it's a free chance for Penn State. Cochran. Cernich. With the kill. It's up. It's up. No, they'll stop play. For a moment, it looked like the official, the down official, was going to let that go. has come in for Terry Zemitis. Nebraska, who trailed at one point 11 to 5, is serving for the tie. Cochran. Reitzma. She's blocked. Penn State's at match point. is back in, as is Claudette Otero. See how calm Zemitis is. Calmly, coolly, she says, all right, one point. Let's just get one point. The ball is in the hands of a senior, Claudette Otero, a tri-captain for the match. Penn State, it's still match point. 
Penn State can win it here. Maria Hedbeck with the serve. Zomitis. Penn State got the substitution in just before the serve. We're tied at 14. Remember, folks, you've got to win it by two. Oh, this is so exciting. Whether you're a Penn State fan or you're a Nebraska fan, you've got to be loving this match. If you've never seen volleyball, you're hooked. Headback will serve. 15-14. Otero will come back in. Kachamani exits. The defending national champions a point away from moving on to the championship round in Cleveland. Does Penn State have the answer now? The crowd will tell you. Penn State has the answer. We're tied at 15. with the kill and Penn State is back at match point that is huge Schoenfeld goes up against Reitzma the freshman gets the kill Reitzman will serve. The Husker All-American is in the back row now. Once again, Nebraska is at match point 17-16. Match point number two for the Huskers. And once again, we'll let the Coliseum tell you the score. Perfect angle. A gutsy call. He made the right call and it was good. 17 all. Penn State has a chance on the joust. Match point for Penn State. Camera wipes it off the block. 18-17. Great serve. Carver! You go with what got you here. It's the backslide by Corver and Reitzma. Here's Kate Cernich, third on the team in service aces. Keeps it in play. Huskers have the coverage. Corver bounces it over. You know, they used to have a cap in volleyball, how many points you could score. But this year, there's no cap. This could go on for a while, as long as someone wins by two. What a wonderful, wonderful volleyball match. The crowd, the teams, we talked about being the match of the year. It's got my vote. Game five. I'm right behind you. Cernich for the match.
Free ball for Nebraska. Nebraska, the defending national championships, who will move on for a chance at a second title in one of the greatest volleyball matches I have ever seen, 20 to 18 in game five. I don't know if I can even talk. It is so amazing, but Nebraska is the champion for a reason. They won't give up. And neither will this crowd. Here is the championship point. Nebraska had the free ball. Nepo with a great pass. And it's Megan Carter on the slide. I've been loving it all night, and it worked again for a trip to the final championship round of NCAA volleyball. It was amazing, and it's Nebraska. Three games to two. They move on to play for the national title. It will go down as one of the greatest matches in the history of the NCAA tournament. It's Nebraska, 15-12, 8-15, 15-13, 9-15, and in incredible game number five, the Huskers outlast Penn State 20-18. to They will play for the national title, and here's how it came to an end. Megan Korver in the middle for Nebraska. She was there all night. On the block, she gets the contact. And then Penn State, a rare ball handling error here when two players can't get a good pass. That leaves it wide open for guess who? Megan Korver on the backside, and she fires it down to lead her team into the championship round. It's been our pleasure to bring it to you now for Holly Rowe. I'm Bill Dolman. Congratulations to Nebraska. They'll play for another national title.